Welcome to Dundark. Last time we left off, we had a we had the Christmas party, and then everything. And then we had the first timeline shift, which was a uh, quite a surprise. I wonder. Yeah, it's weird because Okabe didn't cause it. I mean, he was just sitting there in the room. Uh he he wasn't in the room where it happened though. Um. So, anyways, he's saying, for the first time in almost four months, I felt like the whole world was twisting. Also, this we just started a new chapter called Pandora's Box, so evidently someone's been opening Pandora's Box. Hmm. Who was it? Who had changed the world line? I didn't do anything. I hadn't interfered with the world. So why was the world doing this to me? Oh my gosh. Where are you? I opened my eyes. Things that had already taken on different colors. The world kept wavering until it began once again it became fixed to a single point in time. I wasn't looking for at a warm, cheerful party in the lab anymore. I was outside. It was raining. The rain was falling on my face and dropped so large it hurt. It was a midwinter rain. It was freezing cold. I could feel it sapping the strength from my body. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, it's in a... We've gone to the darkest timeline here. Oh boy. My view started... Stopped twisting. I was staring at the broad back of a man I didn't know. I could hear the sound of many boots stamping through the mud, mingling with the falling rain. The stench was terrible. The smell of sewage was so strong it hurt to breathe. And it was mixed with the awful smell of burning rubber and plastic. Where was I? What was I doing right now? Things around me had changed so much. I tried to understand the situation I was in, but my brain was having an awful time keeping up. Okay. When I stopped, a rough hand patted me on the shoulder encouragingly. I looked around to see a man my age with a strong, powerful face. It's a face I'd never seen. I didn't know him. Probably. The man was wearing the camo outfit and equipment I'd often seen the self-defense force wear on the news. He was carrying an assault rifle on his shoulder. There were about seven or eight people around me, all dressed the same. He surrounded me in a circular formation and walked forward silently as they kept a careful eye on the area around them. So it's like they're escorting Okabe. It's interesting. I wonder why he's so important. Then I realized I was wearing the same camo outfit they were. Or is, or is, or is it El Kabe part of the SDF? Yeah, that, that's possible. Interesting. So I tried my bicep to check, but there was no muscle. It was flabby and weak. Unlike the others, I wasn't carrying any weapons. So he probably isn't part of the SDF. Yeah. The, what was going on here? Yeah, they must be escorting him then. It, it felt like se these seven or eight tough-looking SDF guys were all guarding me. Since when was I that important? Still confused, I dragged myself onwards. Where was I anyway? It was a long path filled with dark brown mud. The walls formed a tall silhouette to the left and right. The path was filled with garbage and concrete rubble, and sometimes we had to force our way past it. I looked past the, uh, I looked up past the high walls. Despite the rain, the moon in the night sky was strangely red and a little too bright. It was thanks to the moon that we were able to walk down the path like this without flashlights. <laughs> sound. I heard a sound. It was the sound of water. It's really loud. Uh, I looked over and a hole, saw a hole open in one of the walls. Filthy water was pulling out. The water formed dozens of little rivers that blocked our path. So that was it. This was the bottom of a river that dried up. What looked like high walls with the dikes. Oh. Can I turn that down a little? Like, it's, uh, the sound of the water? Is that possible? Uh, sound? Uh, sound effect volume, maybe? Maybe? 
Yeah, it's a little better. Um, turned out it's the man who had spoken to me a bit ago, and yelled so that my voice could be heard over the rain. But his words cut off there. Everyone seemed more tense than ever. One of them grabbed me and pushed me to the side of the riverbed. Everyone put their backs against the wall and held their breath. I could hear the sound of a helicopter's rotors in the distance. No, more than just one. They were getting closer. I had no idea what was going on, but I could feel my heart starting to beat faster. Past several meters of rubble lay an overturned car. It must have fallen onto the riverbed and the water had disappeared. The entire body was bent forward and the roof completely crushed. I lay down in the stinking mud and slid into the shadow of the overturned car. At the same time, the SDF soldiers were issuing each other orders, as if this were something that they had planned for already. Two of them stayed by my side, and everyone else ran for the, they ran back the way we came. The cloud climbed up the crevices and outcroppings on the wall and disappeared over the edge of the dike, and out of my view. Shortly after, <laughs> oh, those were gunshots, and not just a single shot from a handgun or anything like that. This was the sound of war. I could hear the helicopters get further away. Drawn by the gunfire. In this world line, was Japan at war? The Third World War. I remembered Suzu's words. I happened to look inside the crushed car. I could see corpses of a man, a woman, and a small child hanging upside down, still attached by their seatbelts. They were all covered in dried black blood. They looked like mannequins at a bad haunted house. And I realized. I'd been so focused on moving forward that I hadn't noticed what they were, but I'd seen similar mannequins sunk into the mud. I'd see their arms, their bones, and ragged muscle exposed to the air, reach up to grasp the sky as if seeking salvation. I put my head over my mouth to stifle a scream. These weren't mannequins. <laughs> He pulled me up. My knees were shaking from shock and exhaustion. The Soviet helicopters. Right, the USSR, created in 92, uh, was after World War II, it began a long Cold War with America, but the Cold War ended in 91. Uh, they consisted of Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and you know, all the Soviet republics. Yeah. Um. So, basically, it's the Russians that are attacking them, but there's the Soviets and not the Russians. Sort of. My mind was dull from the terror, but it seemed like there was something off about what he just said. So, I guess in this timeline, the Soviet Union never fell. It's... A helicopter passed over the river bread. The bright searchlight passed by for a moment, but thankfully, the shadow of the dike hit us. The young SDF soldier, whose name I didn't even know, pulled me inside one of the holes in the concrete. When I looked closely, I could see that was at the entrance to a sewer. It was just big enough for a single person to pass through. Stringing against the flow of water, I came up to my knees. I passed on through the darkness. My sense of smell had already gone numb, so I didn't have to worry about the stench of the sewage. Once aside, we came to several branching paths. The SDF soldiers seemed to know 
which one would lead to where, and they marched without hesitation. And then we came out of the sewer and back onto a riverbed. It was all dried up, like the one we'd just been through. I didn't know if it was the same river or another one, and the two soldiers didn't tell me. Either way, I was glad to finally be out of the foul smelling darkness. I tried to take a deep breath and fill my lungs with fresh air, but <laughs> Halfway through, I realized the riverbed smelled even worse than the sewer. I took an involuntary step back, and then another. The sight around me was just that terrible. What was once a riverbed was now filled with bodies. Some of them had been burnt totally black, so it was impossible to tell how much death lay before me. In the distance, I could see what looked like bonfires. They were burning despite the rain. The fires were consuming the mountains of flesh that were once human bodies. <laughs> the SCF soldier spoke to me, and then I came back to my senses. If it were for these two, I wouldn't have been able to stay sane. We ran through the riverbed, one of them in front of me, the other behind. I could hear the constant drone of the helicopters above me, sometimes the searchlights got very close. Each time they did, I hid in the bodies, in the piles of the bodies until they passed. I've seen this many times before as I wandered through the world lines. I've seen death. I've seen the moments when people had died. But at the same time, I never experienced what happened to a dead person after they were left out for a long time. More than fear, more than sorrow, the thing that hit me first was the smell of death. The rotting stench ate away at my body, not my soul. My whole body was rejecting it. It made me feel sick. Thinking about that, thinking of that what, way meant trampling on the dignity of the dead, but I couldn't help it. The Valley of Hinnom. I remember that phrase. That was what the strange attacker had said that night, when they came after the doctor, Maho, and me. That valley was the origin of the world, or Gena meaning hell. It said that the flames burned there every night, scorching the heavens themselves. Those who died merciless deaths or with anger or misery in their hearts were flung into the flames, their souls becoming black smoke that rained hatred down on the land. What I stared now was uh, what I stared at now was Gena. It's two soldiers led me to a half-collapsed subway tunnel. The lights were off because there was no electricity, but there were three armored cars in the camel colors with their headlights to illuminate the way. They were, all, they were four-wheel drive, off-road vehicles covered in thick chunks of armor, but I didn't see any real weapons. Hmm. Trying to get up to Saitama. The Iruma base, it's uh, one of the eight, the SDF's uh, largest bases, located between Iruma and Sayama cities in Saitama Prefecture. It's home to 18 units and around 4,300 3, personnel. It is also the location of the Air Defense Command Headquarters Flight Group. Okay. So it's some Air Force type stuff. Kanto... Daishitsu? There were a lot of things I wanted to ask, but even as we spoke, I heard what sounded like gunshots inside the tunnel. The men forced me into the back seat of one of the cars. The two soldiers that brought me there saluted and turned around and left the station. I felt like I was never going to see them again. The door of the armored car slammed shut with a heavy thud. The car's th crew were SDF soldiers, just a little older than me. The diesel engine kicked to life, 
and the car raced down a tunnel that had originally been designed for trains. Of course, it wasn't a pleasant ride at all, but I didn't have any choice. There was no way I could tell them I wanted to go to Akiba. <laughs> I had no way to alter the world line. I had no way to survive in this hell hellish world. I had to survive in this hellish world. To survive, I needed to do what they said. My wants didn't matter at all. I wasn't even allowed to express them. I just did as they told me, and ran. It was all I could do. But I had no idea that it would take an entire month. A month? What? Sorry. Um. Ah. A month. Huh. So. Ah. Uh, now we're on the web. Okay. Anonymous at Security Council. Story so far. The USSR starts experimenting with a time machine and America goes apeshit. Give me that time machine, USSR. But I refuse. Eastern powers and Soviets get cocky. How's it feel to be you right now, huh? How's it feel? This brings us to the year of your regular- then of your regularly scheduled Cold War. US, I'm gonna bomb you from Japan, woo woo. USSR, then we'll invade Japan. US, oh shit. Right now. USS are is kicking ass. Hokkaido and Northeast Japan are screwed. Are they coming for Central Japan now? People of Nagoya. GTFO. Amateurs who know nothing about the strategy need to STFU. This is by Captain Captain Bajena. Gina. Hmm. The STF may look like they're retreating, but they've actually got a defense line at Mount Fuji. They're about to start a counterattack. Uh, M Mr. Anonymous at Security Council says, The Mount Fuji line? Who the hell is dumb enough to believe the Japanese Imperial High Command? Ooh. The NSCJ person says, Shut up, noob. Idiots like you are the real threat to Japan. Uh, Anonymous guy says again, Wait, what the hell happened to the collective right of self-defense? America's only interested in protecting Okinawa. So what the hell is the SDF doing getting sent off to Siberia. How are they supposed to protect the country? You protect it, Chicken Hawk. You want to fight? Go, go volunteer. Oh, so I guess that's a must be a different anonymous guy. Yeah. Um. They 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 said they aren't getting enough recruits. Are they gonna start conscription soon? You think? <laughs> What's the point of <laughs> conscripting a bunch of fat otaku? Just get in the way. Where these days requires professional soldiers. Says the fat otaku who doesn't want to go to war. There are barely any professional soldiers left in Japan. Our masters at America sent them all around the globe, and then stuck them there. You guys will probably be getting your conscription notices soon. Good luck, I'm a chick, so I don't care. <laughs> in other words, if we get a sex change, then we don't have to go, right? The real enemies are of Japan are its own citizens, huh, asshole? No, so seriously, are we going to be split up like Germany? It's likely. You say there's a provisional government forming in ok Okinawa. They're all set to abandon East Japan and have America protect the West. Those incompetents in the government might honestly do it. Is this really the time to bash politicians? You traitor shill. Traitor wa shill wa. Strategically, America can't let go of Okinawa, and, Amer and Japan wants to keep some kind of government. That means making a provisional government in Okinawa is the best option. NSCJ says, you bash the hell out of Okinawa up till now, and now you tell me this? Shut up, traitor. So if I'm a traitor, what are you? If you're posting on Atchan right now, that means you either fled the country or ran to Okinawa. Is this today's you don't get to talk thread? Hmm. So the world's going crazy, but uh, they're just shit posting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, W is short version of the. Japanese word for laughter, warai. Oh, okay, so it's, it's supposed to be laughter. Supposedly, it's first used in a non Japanese online game. Adding W to the end of a sentence or placing it in the middle, you can indicate that you find it humorous. On anonymous internet boards, adding more W's, such as www, can be used to increase the amount of laughter or indicate that you're mocking an opponent. Examples of sentences including W are whoa, okay, whoa, 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 and I'm whoa, whoa, getting whoa, whoa, excited, whoa, whoa. Use, using W's in this way sometimes call is, is something called making grass grow because of the way they look. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> okay means okay. Okay. Um. Okay, so I think I'm gonna. This is gonna be a short episode. I'm gonna cut that off there. Um. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.